Hi, this is Mrs. Often. I'm recording this PowerPoint for the Precalculus Statistics Unit. This video, video 3, talks about analyzing data numerically and visually. By the end of this video, you'll have had an opportunity to review a number of terms related to numerical analysis of data and also look at four ways that we can visually analyze data as well as some terms related to visual analysis of data. So let's get started. Okay, so just some vocabulary that you probably recall from working with data previously. The mean is the average of a set of numbers. We take a set of numbers, add them up, and divide by the number of numbers in the set to find the mean. The mean is often noted as X bar. That's an X with a bar on the top. The median is the middle number in an ordered set of numbers. So if my set of numbers is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3 is the median because it is the middle number. If I were to mess up the order and say like 2, 3, 5, 4, 1, 5 would not be the middle number. Even though it was the middle number in the list, it would still not be the median. The number that appears most often is called the mode. A set of data always has a mean, median, and range, but it might not always have a mode. It also could have more than one mode if, say, two numbers both appear twice and no number appears three times. The range is the highest data value minus the lowest data value. And standard deviation is a measure of how spread out the data is. It's a measure of how far each point is from the mean. And we will not be calculating a standard deviation by hand. We will use technology to calculate. The first quartile is the median of the values that are below the general median. And the third quartile is the median of values above the median. Now, the five number summary, which we'll use in box plots, includes the minimum maximum, first quartile, median, and third quartile. So those are your vocab words. Now we have four different visual data displays that you could see. In the top left corner is the histogram. The histogram is like a bar chart. It's important to remember that in the histogram, the bars do touch each other. And numbers are binned that is sorted into different groups. So where you see semester average, that 65 bar is at the middle of the bin. That bucket probably goes from 60 to 70. And the 75 group probably goes from 71 to 80, or something like that. So there could be a variety of numbers inside that bin. In the upper right, we have the dot plot, AKA the line plot. Here. X's are used to represent a number of subjects. Here it's just one subject for each X, but we could have that representing two or more subjects based on the key. Another way of presenting data is seen on the lower left. That's the box plot, as mentioned before. The furthest left bar is the minimum value. The left bar in the box is the first quartile. 25% of values are below that. The middle bar of the box is the median. 50% of values are below that. And the right bar of the box is the third quartile. So 75% of values are smaller than that. Way over on the right-hand side, we see that person sleeping for 12 hours. That is the maximum amount. And finally, we can show data with a frequency table. And this lists the number of hours of sleep that occur and the frequency by which it was reported by each participant. So I think it's nice that we have three different ways in this slide of showing the same data. You can decide which one thing is the most sense when we work on our packets. Now we have data that can be skewed or data that can be symmetric. It is a reference to how, well, basically symmetric the data is. You can see that graph A has most of its values bunched up on the left-hand side, and there's a tail to the right. We call this skewed right. 
graph B has most of its values bunched up on the right-hand side, but there's a tail to the left. This graph is called skewed left. I always forget these, and so it's helped me a lot to remember which direction the tail is going in, and that's the skew direction. So skewed right has a tail on the right. It doesn't mean that most of the values are bunched to the right. Graph C is symmetric. I like this. It's a nice normal looking distribution. The values are evenly distributed about the mean. You'll notice also in data set C the mean and the median are the same and that happens frequently with symmetric data. Outliers are data points that lie far away from the mean. We can choose to ignore these outliers if it is appropriate to. And as I note here, whether a data point is or is not an outlier is the researcher's judgment call, although there are some standards to help with making the decision. Like if you know the standard deviation, um, sometimes people will consider a point to be an outlier if it is more than three standard deviations away from the mean. And that is your judgment call then if you want to include it in your data analysis or not. So that's some vocabulary that you should know and pictures of the visual data displays that we will be working with in the next section.